Every Friday night, the lights go on and the players put everything they have on the line. But what happens when the drive to play outweighs the potential risk of injury? Some high school athletes are finding ways around the precautions coaching and medical staff take to ensure their safety. At the beginning of the sports season, players are encouraged to take a neural brain test called the impact test. Physical therapist Bill Larkin assists players if they fail the test after they receive a concussion. The impact test is a neurocognitive exam. Basically, it tries to test different um, processes that go on in your brain, whether it's memory related, visual, spatial. Um, it tries to take into account your reaction time and all the different processes that you would go through. If the doctors think athletes have a concussion, players take the test again and are not able to play until they pass. The athlete must be cleared by a physician if they want to get back on the field. There is no law put in place that requires athletes to take the test. National regulations encourage athletes to take the impact test, but it is not required unless the school has its own rule. But do players take the test as seriously as they should? Chuck Cook, a former player, admits to taking a lower score purposely. I did not take the impact test seriously. The, my freshman and sophomore year, I tested low on purpose because I didn't want to have to sit out a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game because I had a concussion. Sam Ripp, a former Black River Falls athlete, says other players find different ways to cheat the test. Some people can just like, uh, they have other people take it before and like give them heads up on the what's going to come up. Uh, it's pretty hard to, but uh, I mean, the doctor isn't in the room when you take it, so you can write down little notes if you have a pen or something with you. Uh, you can memorize what te questions come up, so when it tests you again, you remember them. Cook also claims to have used these strategies. But my junior and senior year, I had the test memorized because they never rotated the tests. It was always the same test over and over again, so I didn't have to fail it because I had it memorized. Do players realize the effects that concussions could have on your brain? Less severe symptoms include light headache or having trouble concentrating, but some of the effects are much more serious. Um, you can have visual changes, loss of memory, uh, changes in mood. But not all players understand the repercussions. People I've talked to that have done it, they really don't know the long-term effects, so I don't think they really, they don't really care or don't know. But most of the side effects take much longer to set in. Years after the concussion, there are still abnormal brain waves going on in the athlete's head. But even if players know the effects, do they take them to heart? We're told what they are. I haven't experienced them yet. I'm invincible. I mean, <laughs> maybe one down the road I will. I mean, you see all the stuff about these NFL players. They're getting hit harder than we are. How do players know when they're ready to come back? with Wisconsin passing the law that um, an athlete who sustains a concussion needs to be cleared by a physician. We try to have everybody come through um, who has sustained a concussion, going through um, passing the impact test, being cleared by the physician, and then being able to start a, a return to physical activity by coming to the rehab department and going through that to try to give them the best results and getting back safely. Players realize that their time in high school is limited and do not want to take that for granted. I don't think it's a pressure thing. It's more of just you only have so many games to play. Once you graduate high school, you never get to play high school football again. 